Oh, it is a hot one, but we've got a celebration. I'm reviewing one of the movies that I worked on. It's bitter, kind of like the movie. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. I've worked in the film industry for about four years now, but I've actually never, funny enough, watched anything that I've worked on. So I've worked on Cop and a Half, worked on TV shows like You, Me, Her. I've worked on several Hallmark garbage movies. I've worked on some big shows too, like Man in the High Castle, Away, which is coming on Netflix soon. But the thing that I really enjoy doing in this industry, aside from doing FX, is location scouting. For those of you who don't know what that is, essentially you're the guy who is tasked with trying to find the place that the directors and the producers want to shoot their movie. They'll give you a description of what they're looking for, whether it's a business, a house, a building, whichever, and then they'll kind of give you an area of where they want to shoot for bigger productions. They kind of have the willy-nilly to shoot wherever, but with Vancouver, BC Film, especially smaller projects like this, they have you look for something in a particular area according to budget and scheduling conflictions. So I got to scout for Sniper Assassin's End, which was originally called Lady Death. Originally wasn't even going to be a Sniper movie, this long running line of Tom Berenger movies. This film follows Tom Berenger's son as he's being falsely accused of a murder of a big high official while there is this woman, this Yakuza sniper who is taking out targets according with a big business, big pharmaceutical blah blah blah. Tom Berenger gets kind of wrapped in it to try and help out his son. I'm not gonna beat around the bush here, it's not that good, it's a VOD. Was it fun to find the stuff for? Oh you bet you. Was it even funner seeing the things that I found? Oh hell yes, considering some of the things that I found were not originally intended to be use the in the way they were for instance the beginning of the film has lady death setting up a sniper shot in a hotel room they had me looking for a hotel that was within the vicinity of the vancouver art gallery that had floor to ceiling high windows now there was one building but it cost thirty thousand dollars to shoot in there a day and obviously that wasn't within the budget so I went and found the next best option. And so on and so forth, I found them different areas of the film, quarries, houses, businesses. And honestly, that was so fun to see these things that I found. Admittedly, two big portions of the film take place in a forest and in this really nice mansion by the water, which I didn't have any part of. That was not me for finding that. But a lot of other places I found, for instance, the road where they have the the trap set up and they have the shootout. That was on a road that I knew of and found in Abbotsford. There's this big fancy meeting in this restaurant called The Chameleon in Maple Ridge. The house that they were supposed to kick the door down but instead they did fucking blow it in half. That I found in Fort Langley. The quarry I secured. While I didn't get to secure the big locations like the forest, the main house, and the safe house, I still had a great time finding these things because you get to meet different and interesting people. You get to learn about their homes. You get to learn about the businesses and sometimes you get to eat at them. I got to eat at Rocco's for free. And that was in Mission. That was when they were trying to have me find a gas station. I went as far as Agassiz, which for those of you who don't know, it was about 87 kilometers away from the office, so it's like about 40 miles. So it's, it's a bit of a drive when you're trying to make everything tight and concise. I was kind of surprised that they were even having me go further than Abbotsford. The film's okay, it's, it's a VOD. It's not the greatest, the sound is oddly lacking. And I know the guys who worked on the film are good at their job, so I don't know if it was post work. The post work is a little weird in this film. Music's kind of non-existent. Yeah, it wasn't that hot. It's not as hot as it is right now. Like, my god, I'm sweating doing this review right now. It is so fucking warm right now. But if you guys want to check out a movie that I worked on, I did also do special effects for this film. I did some atmosphere work for them. For instance, when this helicopter lands at the safe house, there was no helicopter landing. It was actually me and a bunch of the other special effects guys operating a bunch of Hessies, which makes the smoke in the atmosphere as well as these giant wind turbines, hurricane wind turbines that can push wind at like 200 kilometers an hour. So that was really, really fun. Something else I actually got to do on the day that I was there for the special effects stuff is I actually got to have a quite a long conversation with Tom Berenger. Admittedly, I got a photo with him earlier. It was just kind of like, I'm very nervous. Like, oh, hey, Mr. Berenger, can I get a photo with you? Love you in platoon. But then later on in the day, I saw him standing by himself and I just went up to him and I said, I don't know if you get talked to about this much, but 
I really loved you in Gettysburg. And that totally changed the day around actually because he's a very big Civil War enthusiast and I have actually found over the years a very big fascination with the Civil War, especially with Ken Burns's series, which we talked about. That was something really cool to connect with about just the love of history, about this crucial moment in American history. And it was really, really fun to talk about that with him and just kind of talk about his experience in the film. Like he talked about the reenactors. He talked about just the scale of the film. It was really, really cool. And unfortunately I got called in a way and he kind of looked a little bit, it was like, oh, that was a good conversation and I'm sorry that I had to leave because we never got to talk again and that, that's, a, that's a missed opportunity but I'm still happy that I took that chance to do that. So if you guys want to check it out, the film is called Snipers Assassins and it was fun to scout for this. I have since scouted for a few projects since then, all of them being hallmarks. Yeah. But you know what? It's still fun to do. It's a really great experience. It is definitely the most fun I've had in the film industry aside from getting to do a blizzard on a car for a snow show. That was fun. That's a story I guess maybe I'll tell another day. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's more of a personal thing for me, but if you guys wanna check out something I worked on, I'm not in the credits at all, but neither is any of the locations team aside from the ALM and the ALM, and neither is the special effects team except for the head coordinator and the lead guy. If you wanna check out my IMDB though, it exists. I'll put that link in the description below. Anyways, that's all for me guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, stay safe out there. Try and stay cool. I'm failing, obviously. Oh, Jesus. Anyways, that's all for me. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign but we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.